You know, sometimes life tries to kill you, and all it takes is a single moment. A stumble, a sharp turn, a sudden cramp. One second everything is normal, the next you're face to face with death. In those moments, something strange happens. The world around you slows down. People who experienced near death reported how time seemed to slow down and sometimes even stop when they were inches away from death. But why is that? Why does time seem to slow when we are in life-threatening situations and how does it work? Let's find out. As you might expect, when the world slows, it's not the world that's slowing down, it's you. To understand how, we need to first understand what time even means, because your brain doesn't have a clock ticking inside your skull. As it turns out, it actually builds time moment for moment from the information it receives. When danger strikes, it starts building a whole lot more of it, almost as if you have unlocked a hidden power. However, neuroscientist David Eagleman asked an important question. Is this hidden power real, or is it just a trick played on us by ourselves? In 2007, he took volunteers to a 150-foot tower, strapped them into a harness, and sent them backwards in a free fall. Mid-drop, a wrist device flashed random numbers really fast, too fast in fact for normal perception. And the idea was simple. If the brain really speeds up in danger, they would be able to read the numbers when falling down the tower. The result? Nothing. Not one person saw the numbers any better than they would on solid ground. However, when asked, participants swore the fall lasted much longer than it actually did. So the slow motion effect isn't about perception, it's about memory. And here is how it works. In high stress moments, your brain slams into overdrive and forces every detail into memory with extreme clarity. Each sound, each movement in crispy clean resolution. When you recall the moment later on, your brain has far more frames to work with and more frames make the memory feel longer than it actually was. It's like filming in slow motion. You are not bending time, you are just recording more frames so the replay can be played back as if you are bending time. However, while this is neat to know, there is a darker side to it. This highly detailed recording can mess things up. For some people, time doesn't just slow down, it refuses to end. People suffering from PTSD experience traumatic events with flashbacks that flood the mind with raw, sensory detail over and over and over. Days can feel like they're looping and the mind becomes trapped inside one terrible moment. Your mind in the end doesn't have a filter, it records everything. The more dangerous it is, the more detail gets recorded. The system that saves your life in danger can turn against you. However, this system wasn't designed to hurt us in the first place. Long before it caused nightmares, it kept our ancestors alive. In the right moment, that same search of focus and detail could mean the difference between life and death. One wrong step could kill you. And if you've survived, you better remember why you survived. While our lives today are far less dangerous, the system is still in use. Not to run from predators, but to thrive. When you are fully absorbed in a task, when distractions fall silent and every move feels effortless, that's flow state. And that's the same machinery at work. But this time, not to keep you alive, but to let you achieve. The same system that once stretched every second to save you, now makes whole hours vanish in creation. And this brings us back to the heart of it. The matrix effect isn't about bending reality or a hidden power. It's survival, it's trauma and it's play. From the outside, time never objectively changes. Seconds pass at the same fixed pace, whether you're safe at home or inches from disaster. But what truly matters to you is your personal sense of time, and this one isn't fixed at all. It stretches, slows down, speeds up, and reshapes itself whenever it feels the need to do so. In all cases, it's not the clock that changes, but your experience of it. And if your experience can stretch, vanish, and warp at will, then what is time really? To end this video with the words of someone way smarter than me, the distinction between past, present and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion.